is a front wheel drive BMW hot hatch sacrilege? <gasps> We're going to find out because this is the new 128 Ti and it's effectively BMW's answer to the Volkswagen Golf GTI. To find out if it's any good, what I'm going to do is show you around the car. I'm going to talk you through the upgrades over the standard one series. I'm of course going to take it for a bit of a hoon and yes, I'm going to launch it. See how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start off this video by talking about the price. So this new BMW 128Ti starts from just over £33,000, but you don't want to pay that. You want to click on the pop-out banner up there that's popping out in the top right-hand corner of the screen to get a car wow to see how much you can save on one. Because on average, you can save £4,000 off a new one series through car wow. Now, if you want to do that at a later date, you can just simply Google help me car wow and my team and I will help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. All right, let's talk about the design. First thing to note is you now have this 128 Ti badge. I haven't seen that Ti badge for a while. Also, the car comes with a sporty roof spoiler, though if you think that's a little bit too in your face, you can delete it and get a more discreet one. You get a sportier rear bumper with a sort of diffusory effect that's fake. Another thing that's fake, these air vents, which are highlighted in red. It really makes them stand out, so you really notice they're fake. What isn't fake, though, are the exhaust pipes. Where is my stick of truth when I need it? I'm having two finger. In fact, I can fit four fingers in there. Real exhaust pipes. Good on you, BMW. Moving down the side, you get bespoke alloy wheels. They start at 18 inches. That's what you get as standard. But you can upgrade to 19s. The car gets black surround for the windows and obviously blacked out in the back for that mean look. The thing that really stands out, though, is this look. The side skirts are in red. And you've got this TI badge down here. Nice little decal. If you get a blue or a red car, then those red bits are actually in black. You get body colour door mirror caps. So you can upgrade to some weird carbon fibre effect ones, which look, yeah. The thing that really stands out is this. Look, red brake calipers. This is the first time ever on a BMW you've got red brake calipers as standard. Moving to the front, you have the same sporty front bumper as on the M135i. So these air vents are highlighted in red and they are real. These are actually real vents. In fact, all these vents are real. The thing that's different to the 135i is that that car has like a mesh grille. This one has vertical slats. Sort of stands out though, doesn't it, in black? It's almost like it's got a moustache. As standard, you get LED headlights. These are actually the upgraded adaptive ones with a hexagonal pattern in them, which is quite nice. I don't know about you, but does this car sort of remind you of a Nike trainer? From the 1980s. It does in this white. What do you think? Here on the inside, it's all about the extra red stitching. Though you don't have to have the stitching in red, you can have it in blue or grey. You choose. Anyway, you get some stitching. And here on the centre armrest, you get a TI badge as well. <sighs> stitching on the steering wheels, on the centre boss of the steering wheel as well. We've got red outlines for the carpets. Wow. And then there's this red insert here on the seats as well as some more red stitching as well. Oh, and look, we get the M red, blue and blue striping on the seat belts. Lovely, like that. Actually, I like these seats. They're not the most body hugging, but they're all right. And you get the extended under thigh support, which you're getting quite a lot of BMWs, I like that. Yes, good if you've got long thighs. You also get an M Sport steering wheel, which doesn't seem overly fat unlike some others, but you can actually upgrade this to an Alcantara steering wheel with a red centre marker as well in the top if you want to go for that full sporty effect. Other things to note are this, look, you've got some M kick plates, I like those, and these inserts here, they have ambient lighting in them and obviously that's red as well and some more red stitching. Other than that, it's just like a normal one series, so actually the interior quality is very, very good and better than the new Volkswagen Golf GTI. Now, if you want to see what I mean, you can click on the pop-out banner up there to watch my full in-depth video review of that car. Here in the back, it's just like a normal one series, so decent headroom, decent knee room, practicality of easy to access Isofix anchor points. It's good, but then there's still the sporty bits on top. So look, you've got the red patterns on the seats here. You've got the M stripes on the seat belts. You've even got the red surround for the carpet mats. And look, you can really see the LED lights there shining in the door. It just raises the cabin a bit, makes it seem more exciting. Quite like it. 
The beauty of a hot hatch is that it's fun yet also practical and the One Series has a decent sized boot and it's no different on this 128Ti. 380 litres which means you can just about squeeze in six airplane style carry-on luggage cases. It's all right that, however if you want to carry loads of stuff in your hot hatch you're going to need a Skoda Octavia VRS and I'll put a link to one, my review of it, just up there in the top right hand corner of the screen. Click on that, you can watch that video. And that brings you on to five annoying things about this car. For some reason, BMW make these Michelin Pilot Sport tyres a non-cost option. That means you have to physically tick a box in order to have them fitted to your car, which of course you're going to do if you know that you've got to tick the box. There is a chance that you may forget or the dealer might not tell you, in which case you'll just end up with normal tyres, which is silly because you will want these tyres, they're very, very good. In fact, I have them on my own Porsche 911. It's a bit annoying they've done it like that. They should just fit them as a matter of course. Oh, and also beware, if you go for the 19-inch alloy wheels, you can't then get the Pilot Sports. Despite the fact this car costs over £30,000, you don't get the full digital dials as standard like you do on the M135i. Instead, you get the fake look digital dials. So this is actually an analogue dial, but it's done in such a way that it looks sort of digitally. Ugh. And then you get a little digital screen between the two dials, which is very low def. You also get the smaller infotainment screen as well. If you want to upgrade to the system you get on the M135i, which is much better, that's an extra thousand pounds. And there's another thing I've noticed, the graphics of the car that you see are the 128Ti, but look, it doesn't have the red accents on it. They should have gone the whole hog and done it properly. I really like the Ti logos here, but while this car is pretty much brand new, the logo is already peeling off. And it's sort of like a scab that's starting to come away. It makes you just want to rip it. Ooh. Hot hatches are supposed to be all about fun and driver involvement. So it's a bit of a shame this car only comes with an automatic gearbox. There is no manual option, so you can't row the gears yourself. You can get this car with an optional heads-up display. The only problem is, is that I've noticed that on this car, I don't know if it does it on others, it actually shakes a bit. Could be to do with the fact that this car has stiffer suspension than the normal one series, or this particular car just has a problem. Don't worry, there's still plenty to like about this car. Here's the car wow, five core features. Speaking of suspension, it's not only stiffer than the standard cars, it rides 10 millimeters lower to the ground. There's also some extra chassis bracing, such as in the engine bay, and BMW has tweaked the rear suspension geometry to account for the fact that this car is front wheel drive compared to the 135i, which is four wheel drive. This car gets a limited slip differential across the front axle, and that will send power to the wheel with the most grip to help slingshot you out of turns. To get you rotating into the corner into the first place, they've actually tweaked the car's stability control system. So what it'll do, when you lift off the accelerator, it'll break the inside wheels to get the car rotating, but it won't allow it to rotate so much that you end up spinning off the road and into a tree. You get M Sport performance brakes, so you've got four pot calipers here at the front, gripping 360 millimeter discs, bigger than you get on the front of the normal one series. High performance front wheel drive cars can struggle with something called torque steer, and that's where the wheel actually like tugs around in your hand like that as you put the power down and the tyres fight for grip. To counteract that, the car's electric power steering system actually turns the wheel in the opposite direction to keep it nice and still when you accelerate. This car is powered by a two litre engine with twin power turbo. It doesn't mean that it's got two turbos, it means that it's got a twin scroll single turbo. Yeah, it's engineering guff. The result is 265 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. Now that power is sent to the front wheels only via an eight speed automatic gearbox with launch control. So you know what that means, don't you? Oh yeah. This car is supposed to do 0 to 60 in 6.1 seconds, but we're gonna find out. Now it is a little bit damp out there, so being front wheel drive, it might struggle, but that's the point. Let's see how well it puts its power down. I'm gonna time it to 60 miles an hour using my specialist timing gear. Let's just set this off. Oh, oh, come on, there we go. There we go, specialist timing gear. You just take it, take it easy. Here we go, let's launch it. Oh, 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 it did the horrible thing where the front wheels skip a bit as they struggle. Yeah, got a time. 6.47 seconds, let's push on for the quarter mile. Come on, get to there. 14.67, not great, not great, not great, not great. Did you hear that? I hate it when certain front wheel drive cars do that, when you floor them, when you accelerate it, away 
from a standing start and it's a bit damp and they skip and the whole car just shakes and jolts it's horrible a bit disappointed with that i'm going to give it another go you can do better i think this bit of tarmac around here is a little bit more grippy when it's wet gotta beat 6.47 actually considering it was struggling for traction it's not far off the claim time let's give it another go right launch again launch active let's go Again. Oh, a bit better that time. Come on, what are you going to do? 5.95? You what? <laughs> if it was dry, it's going to go even quicker. I am impressed with that. 5.95 from a front wheel drive medium hot hatch. Medium hot hot hatch is what I mean. You get the idea. While well, we're doing some performance testing, I think it's only fair to do a brake test. So. Let's see how long it takes this car to stop from 70 miles an hour. Ignore the numbers on the specialist timing gear because they're in kilometres because I need to switch the units to metres because I want the distance in metres. So here we go. Stopping from 70 miles an hour for emergency stop. What's it going to do? Oh, it stopped from 70 miles an hour in just 48 metres pretty impressive. Now if you click in the pop-out banner up there you can see just how well a Toyota GR Yaris, a Honda Civic Type R and a Mercedes AMG A45S stop. You can also see how quick they accelerate and lots of other stuff as well because it's a very cool group test video. Let's move on. Okay so that's some of the performance testing done. Let's see what this car's like to drive when you want to have fun. So I'm going to put it into manual mode for the gearbox. I got my stability in, in the sporty setting into this corner see how it feels yeah it feels pretty stable this does oh it really grips well now i'm going to blat it out of this corner go on diff oh you can feel the diff hooking up and the gear shifts are pretty quick you know this isn't a dual clutch automatic it's a torque converter and it's not too bad it's not as quick as the gearboxes you get in the bigger bmw cars but it's still okay and this engine has some decent mid-range punch, it really does. And the brakes, they're strong feeling and they're progressive, so they're not grabby, which is nice. And the steering's fairly good as well. It's quite pointy. It feels a little bit more pointed than the 135, I don't remember. Maybe that's just in my head. Maybe it's to do with the fact that this car is lighter. It's 80 kilos lighter than the 135i. I'll tell you one thing I like about it as well. Watch this. It'll let me hit the rev limiter, look. So you actually have to change it up yourself. Yeah, I'm responsible. BMWs always do that. If this was an Audi S3, it should auto change up. Hate it when they do that, when they really nanny you. And obviously being a BMW, you turn the stability control off, it will be all the way off. But seeing as it's slippy today, I'm not going to. It feels like fun, this. I'm quite impressed. Considering this is their first attempt at like a Golf GTI rival, they've done a blooming good job. Finally though, let's just see what it's like to coast around it. So I'm gonna put everything in comfort. That just changes the responsiveness of the gearbox and makes the steering feel a little less heavy and softens the throttle response. It's quite soft now. Put it into auto mode, cruising around. It's good enough. The suspension has that sporty edge to it. So when you hit bumps, you do feel them a bit but it feels relatively well settled. It doesn't fidget about. You know, I could easily live with this every day in the setup. Bit of tire noise, that's about it. Wind noise is fine. It's quite a relaxing car, I like it. Yeah, you could definitely daily this, no problem at all. The best of both worlds, or is it the best of all worlds with a hot hatch? Because you've got the performance, you've got the ease of driving, and you've got the practicality. It's job done, I think. So then, what's my final verdict on the BMW 128Ti? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the 128Ti. If you're after a posh feeling, fun to drive, hot hatch, that's front wheel drive, it's a good choice. Did you know that the TI badge stands for Turismo Internationale and has been used by BMWs on various sporty versions of normal cars since 1963? 
interesting hay. Now, if you want to watch some more videos, click on the windows. And if you click on that box there, you can go to CarWide to see how much money you can save on a new car.